graffiti and litter are also everywhere, casting an ugly stain on our otherwise beautiful city. What ordinances or programs would you like to see adopted to educate people, prevent this kind of problem, and punish offenders? Let me, um, when I first took office, uh, I, was, I was quickly acquainted to the graffiti problem in the Heights. And uh, I want to thank my, my friend uh, Peter Basso, a former president of the Washington Park Association, who brought it to my attention and um, brought me a, a list of sites with photos of all of the graffiti um, in the Heights, 159 si sites where graffiti was, was uh, plastered throughout, uh, throughout the Heights in Jersey City. Um, you know, he, he was frustrated by the, the, the time it was taking to remove it on public and private property, as well as the bad patchwork that the Jersey City Incinerator Authority uh, was doing to, to, uh, to clean it up. Um, we, we can do a better job, and we will lead by example um, in doing this. Anyone can walk into a bathroom um, in City Hall, and you'll see graffiti. Uh, that, that won't be acceptable. Again, I'll reiterate, uh, that uh, Team Fold will not accept mediocrity, and uh, it starts at home. So we're gonna make sure that um, our public properties um, are, are, that graffiti is removed in a timely manner. And I know myself, uh, I'm having discussions with uh, Peter Basso about that, I'm looking to remove that within 48 hours. Um, and we'll, we'll see, to get, see if we can get that done as well and, and make the 48 hour uh, removal uh, mandatory. Um, we will establish standards and training to ensure that uh, when, it's, when it's removed and cleaned that there's, that there's standards for the people who are doing the work. Um, when, and it won't be with the incinerator authority at that point, it'll be the Department of Public Works because we're gonna consolidate those, those, those two departments. Um, but we're gonna make sure that that's done um, as well. Uh, again, I can't more reemphasize the idea that uh, um, the broken window theory and the idea that we're going to be very stringent and uh, strident on this, on this code enforcement and ensuring that, that the people of Jersey City get the quality of life that they deserve. We hear about education about graffiti. I, I don't know what education we need to know about graffiti. I got a good education about graffiti when I was a kid. I remember so well it was mischief night and in my neighborhood we went around and we soaked up all the cars well, the parents all came out, and I was fat when I was a kid, so I was the only one that got caught. Well, my parents made me wash every car on the block, soaked or not. I got an education, and I never did it again. This is area where I have very little to no sympathy with anyone destroying, not only public property, can imagine, imagine you have your house painted, a new garage door put up, whatever it is you've done to your house, and some jerk comes along and puts some god over ugly graffiti on it, I have no sympathy for that. And they should be punished to the fullest extent. I know some states allow where they, the person that did it must, must rub it off. And I like to see that happen. Now maybe we have constitutional protections against that. But it's not just enough to find the parent or the child. There should be some form of punishment that they learn not to do that again. Because that, get, oh, well, it happened to my house once and I couldn't, I don't know who did it, but maybe he's lucky I don't know who did it. But it's, it's just so, such an ugly thing to look at. It uglifies our entire city. And I feel sorry for the poor people that have scrimped and saved to better their property and to have that come along and happen to it. It should not be tolerated. Um, so graffiti is this, this is a thing where people think that it's, uh, it once was art, now it has become a public, public nuisance. It, it used to be art, it's no longer that, because people aren't realizing how it affects other people in their communities. So some of the things that we have to do is actually have, uh, make sure that we're teaching kids in school and reinforcing that that this is not something you do. It's not something you do as part of society. It's not something you do to your neighbors. It's, it's, it, and, and they should learn that from a very early age. And, and in addition to that, we should know that currently on the Jersey City uh, website, uh, on the Jersey City, Jersey IA website, private owners can actually apply to have, uh, have the, the graffiti removed from their private property, or they can have it painted over. 
Um, you go on the website, you fill out your information, you need to have that information filled out, or you can tell the fellow residents, hey, I see some graffiti on your property, hey, this is where you should go and get this removed. You know, there are ways of getting that off there as well. Uh, we're going to need to work closer with enforcement and the community to track and prevent it from going up again. And I, I stress the prevent. You know, we start making sure that we understand what is the cycle. You know, this person is tagging on this building. This is the tag that they're going up with. This is what they're writing down. You know, we know that they're working in this area. If we start policing these areas, if we start foot patrols in these areas, if we start going around and looking and finding out who is putting up these things on a regular basis, then we can go and catch, uh, and catch the person who's doing it before they go and put up any more tags. Uh, and I don't know about, I, I, I must be going to a different city hall, but I, I've been going to the city hall and I realize that as soon as something goes up, it's been taken down. Um, the administration has been very good with that. What I would say is as, as far as constituents are concerned, we need to make sure that the constituents are talking. Talk to your local councilman, talk to your large councilman, you know, hopefully that's amazing. Um, but Thank reach you. out to them and let them know that you see something so that it can be addressed immediately. Thank you. <laughs> Councilman Regalado. Yeah, we all know that graffiti is a big problem in Jersey City. Uh, what we may not know is that it's, it's probably bigger than we think. I mean, why, why are people writing on, on buildings and on walls all over our city? And we have to, we have to figure out why. And a lot of these whys are because these kids are tagging up buildings and walls because they're marking their territory. They're tagging because they, it's gang related and they're marking up the buildings to let other gang members know that we're on this turf. So we have to focus on that aspect of it. We have to, we have to make sure that we see where it's coming from. We have to educate the, the youth, we have to keep them out of gangs, and we have to make sure that, that this is not happening. And how do you clean it up? You get the same gang members that are in the correctional facility, you get them out here to do their community service and clean up these uh, tagged up buildings. We get them to work. the buildings and maybe when they get out of jail they don't want to write on them anymore. As far as the garbage, you know there is garbage is another issue, but how do we how do we solve that problem? The way we solve the garbage issue is that we give the uh, the city jobs to the people who live here. You want the garbage picked up and cleaned up, give it give the job to the citizens of Jersey City. Let them take care of uh, of the city and let them work here. When they're working here, they care more about throwing that piece of paper on the ground. Thank you. Candidate Waterman. I do agree with everybody concerning uh, reinforcing <coughs> the graffiti on law, but I, I do believe this, that we should approach it also by recreation. And the reason why I believe we should approach it by recreation because uh, the kids have nothing to do. Now, I'm a mother. I raised three children. Now, if children don't have anything to do, a lot of times they can get into things that they have no business. And sometimes uh, graffiti really is one of them. So I think, you know, I, I visit Philadelphia and I saw that they did a mural uh, for kids that have uh, a skill in the arts. And what that does, it allows them to work with a local um, artist and they build these murals. And what that did for Philadelphia, it cut down on their graffiti because they do want to express themselves, um, but we don't have recreation for them to do it. So yes, we can enforce the law, but after the law is enforced and we go home and go to sleep, two, three o'clock in the morning, they're gonna come out and do it again. So we have to make a way for them to express themselves in the arts, but do it legally. Um, because believe it or not, it could be your child. And it's a difference if it's your child out there uh, writing the graffiti. You, you would, as the parents said, we know he's trying to express himself, so we need to come up with some type of recreation for him to express himself. So I would kind of take it on that approach because uh, these children need something to do, and that's, what, that's why they destroy uh, property. Uh, I think that's good. I do.
Well, I think uh, graffiti is a problem, but uh, I'll tell you one thing. Everybody on the panel does have a lot of good things to say, and you know, some disagree on the graffiti. I grew up as a graffiti writer, and uh, downtown Jersey City, and I was that. Was that you? That was that heavy. <laughs> I was I was that heavy kid that got busted by his dad, and his dad made him clean it up. And I think I did one of the biggest. Uh, I did one of the biggest graffiti murals you could think of in the church that my father goes to. So I was really reprimanded and you know what? My dad made me do community service. I was 14, 15 years old. And you know what? I respect him for that and I thank him for that now. Uh, but I tell you, I've had a, I, and, and, and with the eye of art, I see how Jersey City administration now does the patch up and you know if you have black if you have gray light gray paint they patch it up with dark gray dark gray and that looks depressing but uh, I can tell you that I had two teachers from Ferris High School uh, Miss uh, Weber and Miss Benjamin and you know what they showed me that uh, there is uh, a creative outlet to what I was doing and I think that uh, Team Fulham has a beautiful plan to create after school programs for our, ch for our kids so that they can have that out. And uh, listen, let, let's provide these kids with canvases, let's provide these kids with paint brushes, and let's provide these kids with paint and let them express themselves. And that's a good thing to do. Thank <laughs> you.